In this part of the video I'm going to show you how to power rim a hole into this uh, flange here that's being held in the three jaw chuck by a, a little hub and we're going to ream that half inch diameter power ream it that is and we're going to follow these steps number one we're going to center drill it number two we're going to drill a uh, pilot hole in this case quarter inch and then uh, this drill is a 31 64 now that's just one size smaller than half inch because you remember on a reamer you only take off a small amount you're sizing the hole also a reamer uh, hopefully brings the hole into true round uh, a hole may not be all that round when you drill it if you're able to measure it uh, real accurately like they would at Caterpillar or someplace like that and uh, we got two different kinds of reamers here this is a uh, chucking reamer that's the one I'm going to use with straight flutes and then there's another reamer here that's also a half inch and it has a taper shank on it but I'm not going to use that one simply because the chucking reamer can be held right in the chuck that I already have set up so it saves one step now there's one other thing I wanted to tell you that this is called a floating reamer holder and this would go in the tail stock this one has a broken off tang on it but a floating and the reamer would go in this end the purpose of a floating reamer holder is that it will allow the reamer to to float if you're just a little bit off of uh, center and always keeps it parallel floating but always parallel never going in at an angle these are very commonly used on uh, automatic machines quite an expensive device I don't think I need it for what I'm doing here All right, <clears throat> we're center drilling go very slow as you first pierce the work so that it does not deflect And we're going to go in about two-thirds of the way up the 60-degree taper on the center drill. So number three, center drill. Back that off. Now we're assured that our hole is in the exact center. Now I'm drilling it quarter inch. I put a little bit of aluminum cutting fluid on the uh, drill bit. And we're going to go all the way through. As I get in there a little deeper, I will back it out to clear the chips. I am now drilling it 3164, which is one size under half inch. Now we got the half inch chucking reamer and we're reaming away. And I put plenty of cutting fluid on there. Now, remember this won't take off very much. And we're only taking off a 64, so there won't be a lot of shaving. And there we go. We got a, hopefully, a perfectly reamed hole. Now, one thing I didn't mention a minute ago on uh, the purpose of a floating reamer holder, sometimes you get a bell-mouthed hole, and if you can visualize from this bell center punch here, what we mean by a bell-mouthed hole is that it's larger on one end than the other, and then the work is usually ruined, and that is the purpose of a, of a, a floating reamer holder. Now I'm going to ream on the drill press, and I'm going to ream this... Uh, aluminum casting out but uh, this is the one we just did a minute ago on the lathe and I wasn't satisfied when examining the inside there's a few spots that didn't quite clean up so I'm going to drill one size larger or shall I say one size smaller this is a 15 30 seconds and then half inch so uh, a 64th under wasn't quite enough we're going to go with uh, one thirty second under you know it depends on the material too uh, if it's steel, maybe the 64th is okay, but I, I think I'm going to have to stick with the <clears throat> 132nd. And I've already laid this out, center punched it, and center drilled. And then my next step is going to be to pilot drill it. Got a quarter inch bit here, and I'm just going to drill it through. This is 
Now, I know what some of you are saying, that crazy fool, why doesn't he have that in a drill press vise? Well, in something this size, uh, the reason for that is that I want the work to literally float around and pull itself onto center into the reamer so that I'm not getting a bell mouth hole. Now, this is the half inch reamer, and we already got some uh, cutting fluid on there. And one thing I never did tell you, never run a reamer backwards like a hand reamer or uh, in any kind of machine, you will dull it very quickly. Only turn it clockwise. cleaned up real nice and we're done again never run a reamer counterclockwise it will dull it next I'm going to show you how to hand ream in the lathe now this is not a power operation so we've got the lathe uh, in back gears locked up so the spindle won't turn we've got a ball bearing center we've got tailstock locked I've already prepared this stock by center drilling pilot and then a 15 30 seconds and we're going to use a half inch hand reamer now. Now a hand reamer is always uh, can be identified by the shank and it's got a square end on it and a center hole. So we will support it uh, by the center and, and we're going to feed in with the tailstock hand wheel just a little bit at a time as we rotate it with a crescent wrench or some other wrench on the square. Always going clockwise, never counterclockwise. I hope my hand doesn't get in the way, but I'm going to be turning it like this and I'm slowly advancing the hand wheel. I know it isn't in the picture. Pushing it in, you can see chips starting to form and we're going to do that until we get to the full depth of whatever it is that we're reaming. Now I'm not going to do the whole thing. Remember, you don't use these under power. Now when you go to back these out, you see that the center holds it perfectly straight. When you go to back these out, now I am withdrawing my tailstock center, and you need to pull on the reamer at the same time that you're still continuing to pull it, uh, turn it uh, clockwise. Don't turn it backwards. I'm not going to go in all the way, because I think you get the idea it would take too long. But that's how you hand ream on the lathe. That can also be done on the drill press if the work is uh, clamped down or held in a vise where it isn't going to move. Now here's yet another use for a hand reamer and there's many, probably hundreds of uses, but this is just something that came to mind. Uh, this is a pulley and quite often a pulley or a sprocket or something else you might have gets a, a galled hole in it and uh, this is a 5 8 reamer so I put this in a, a tap wrench and I'm uh, just cleaning this hole up and if you got a set screw make sure you back it out you don't want to hit the set screw with the reamer because it, it is a hard the set screws are always hardened and they will nick the reamer and so I'm going to go all the way through now the hand reamers are tapered slightly near the end to enable them to uh, start so you always have to go in deep enough to overcome that little bit of a taper. And now there are some chips down here, so I did clean up some. And then again, when we back it out, we're continuing to go clockwise. And I'm withdrawing it with my other hand. Now, if your pulley has a 
keyway in it, you will need to use a spiral fluted reamer. Otherwise it's going to go yug -a dug -a dug as it hits that keyway. This concludes the video on reamers. Hope this has been helpful. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.